Okay, so welcome back. In the last video, we had sort of an introduction to the three different components of a moment about some point O in three-dimensional space. So in this video, I want to derive what these values are, mx, my, and mz. So let's say that you had a three-dimensional coordinate system. So this is y, this is x, and then this is z. And right in the middle, you had point O, and that was the origin. And from O, you had some position vector R that went to some point in space. And that point, I'll just go ahead and call maybe A. And so this is our position vector R. And to point A, we had another uh, force vector right here, which was acting in some direction from A. And it was causing a three-dimensional moment about point O. So this is this force right here is not exactly horizontal, it's just some force vector that has components along the x, y, and z axes. And so it's sort of hard to figure out what that moment is, right? We need to figure out values for the moment about point O, that this force in some arbitrary position in three-dimensional space that's acting on point A is causing about this origin point right here. So in the last video, I said that a moment is a vector, just like our force vector or our position vector, and it has components mx, my, and mz. How do we actually get these values? So if you had a numerical problem where you had to calculate mx, my, and mz, or just the moment in general, and you had numerical values for f and r, how would you calculate that without really relying on something like the right-hand rule, right? The right-hand rule really wouldn't come to, or it wouldn't be super helpful in this example just because R is in three dimensions, F is in three dimensions, and so your M is gonna be in three dimensions. How do you figure this out? Well, that's what we're gonna go over in this video. We're gonna to try to derive these, uh, we're going to derive these values, MX, M, M, Y, and M, Z, symbolically, so that you sort of understand how you can apply this to numerical examples. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is, number one, we need to project each one of these force vectors, or I'm sorry, position vector and force vector into its three-dimensional components along x, y, and z. So let's start off with our position vector. Our position vector is going to have three components. It's going to have an rx component plus an r y component plus an r z component and the values for each one of these components is going to be r x times the unit vector i plus r y times the unit vector j plus r z times the unit vector k and now r x r y and r z those are just scalar quantities just values and what they really represent are the distance x uh, times the unit vector i plus the distance y plus the distance z. So again, this position vector right here has three components. It's got a component along the x uh, coordinate or the x axis, which is rx. It has something along the y, and this is ry, and it has something along the z. This is rz. And so rx, ry, and rz are really just these values right here. And if we keep breaking them down, we get something like this, where we have the x distance, which is the distance from here to this point right here. And then y is just that, and then k is just that. Okay, so we can represent r as being just x times i plus y times j plus z times k. Okay, great. What about this force vector right here, f? Well, if I break it up into its components, it's going to have some component here, which would be f of x. It would have some component here, which would be f of y. And then it would have some component here, which would be f of z. Now, we know that f of x is just the value of that force times the unit vector i f of y is the same thing. It's f of y times the unit vector j. And then f of z is f of z times 
the unit vector k. And so really, this becomes f is equal to fxi plus fyj plus fzk. Okay, so well, that takes care of r and f. Well, what about m, right? m is this thing right here. Our moment is based off of this equation right here, where you have m of o is equal to m of x plus m of y plus m of z. And we know that the equation in sort of general terms is m of o is equal to r cross f. So a good place to start would be to take this position vector and this force vector and plug them into this equation, and hopefully we'll get a step closer to figuring out these three values. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and say that, well, if m is equal to r cross f, then this really turns out to be xi plus yj plus z k, right, that's the position vector, which is right here, and all I did was I just moved it down here, this would be k hat, and then that is crossed with f, and f is f of x i plus f of y j plus f of z k. Okay, so all I did was I just took this and I plugged it into this equation. Okay, so now what I can do is I can use the distributive property to expand this equation out. Now, before I do that, I want to direct your attention to this diagram right here because obviously we're going to do cross products of unit vectors, and so this should sort of help us out with signs and directions. Now, if you don't know where this is coming from, I would highly suggest you watch a few videos back where I discuss this unit vector cross product diagram to help us figure out the directions of cross products of unit vectors. Okay, so moving on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of these three terms and I'm going to distribute them and multiply them with these three terms. So remember, we're going to take this first value right here and we're going to multiply it by that, plus by that, plus by that, and we're going to get three values and then we're going to do the same thing for y and the same thing for z. So let's start off with this x component right here. Now, if I take x and this value right here, what I end up with is x times f of x. But now when I do the cross product of this i and i, well, we know by this diagram that if you take the cross product of the same two unit vectors, so i cross i, we would end up with 0. So this would just be multiplied by 0. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So let's take this term and cross it with this term. And what we end up with is x times f of y. But now we do i cross j. And if we look at this diagram, if we do i cross j, we end up with positive k. So this would be positive k. Okay, let's do this term and this term. And if we cross that, we get x times f of z. But now we're doing i cross k, okay? This diagram tells us i cross k is j. But because we're going this way and not this way, we're going to have a negative j. So this would be negative j. Okay, cool. So that finishes off that term. Let's move on to this second term. So we're going to do y times j crossed with f of x times i. So that I'll just do on a second line. I'll say plus y times f of x, and here we're crossing j cross i. So j cross i is going this way. It's going to give us a negative k. So this would be negative k hat. And then plus, we're doing this term times this term. So this is going to be y times f of y, but here we're doing j cross j and j cross itself is 0. And then finally, we do y times this term right here, and that gives us y times f of z, and here we're doing j cross k. So j cross k gives us positive i, right? We're going this way. So this is going to be just i. Okay, let's finally do this last term right here. We're going to do this times this, 
and I'll do that on a third line, and I'll say that z times f of x, well, here we're doing k cross i. So k cross i is positive j. So this would be j right here. I didn't need the parentheses, but oh well. Um, okay, so this times the next term right here would give us z times f of y, and here we're doing k cross j. So k cross j gives us negative i, because we're going this way. So this will be negative i hat. And then finally, we have this and this term, so that would be z times f of z, and here we're doing k cross k. Well, k cross itself is going to give us 0, so this term is going to be 0. So you can sort of see that there's three terms in here that all go to 0. And so if those terms go to 0, I'm going to go ahead and sort of simplify all of this into something like this. So this equation turns out to be y times f of z times i minus z times f of y times i plus z times f of x times j minus x times f of z times j and then finally plus x times f of y times the unit vector k minus y times f of x times k. And so all I did in this equation was I just removed all of the zero terms and then I combined all of the like terms. So I put all the i's together, the j terms together, and the k terms together. And so what this tells us is that this right here is our m of x value. And this right here is m of y. And then finally here is m of z, right? Because you can distribute the i's out here. And so you would have y times fc minus z times fy, and then entire quantity times i. And that would give us the x component of our moment. And the same thing here, this would give us the y component. And then finally, this one would give us our z component. So if I were to write that out over here, just so you could see it a little bit better, the magnitude of the m of x component would just be y times fz minus z times fy. And then the magnitude of the y component would be z times f of x minus x times f of z. And then finally, mz would be equal to x times f of y minus y times f of x.